Right, this time we're going to uh, start our pollination of our ear that we emasculated earlier. And to do this, we're going to find our ear that we emasculated. Uh, this one will be about three days ago. And we're hopefully going to find a pollen donor, which is going to line up nicely so that we can uh, pollinate this ear. So the emasculation, I find, is a, just a very much a systematic um, operation. You're removing anthers and you just need to do it accurately. The collection of the pollen is uh, quite skillful. Uh, you need to know the development of the ear, you know, to be where to look for the, the anthers that you need, and you need to know the timings of the ear. So, to do that, you can have two approaches. Um, one, you can know the heading time of your varieties that you're using, and if that's the case, you'll know that they'll come up at certain times and they'll, they'll match up. Uh, secondly, if you have your female part where your stigma is, this can be put into the cold uh, for a while to hold it up. But you can't really hold up the male because that will uh, mess up the pollen. And finally, the other one would be to sow multiple batches of your, of your pollen donor so that you have a good supply of pollen. So on with um, your appropriate pollen donor. Here it is. This, is. this is exactly what we're looking for right now. We're looking for an ear where we've got some very nice bright yellow anthers hanging out, extruding. And uh, further down the ear, we can see there are no anthers hanging out. This means that we're gonna have good pollen inside some of those florets. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna gently open up and start looking for these, these, uh, these anthers that I'm gonna use for pollen donor. Here, the first one we look at is too late. Although the anthers are not extruding, they're still, they've already exploded, they've already anthesed. So you work your way down until you find some anthers which have, are still intact. And this looks like to me. So I'm going to pull those out and put them onto the back of my hand. And what I'll find is, if I go around collecting these, I will find that the anthers with the warmth of my hand will get to the stage of anthesis where the pollen starts to come out. So what I'm doing is I'm putting whole anthers, completely intact anthers on the back of my hand and I'm watching for them to move and pop open and they go from a tight yellow anther to a much fatter whiter anther and it's actually happening while it's on the, on the back of the hand. So they, they, they begin like this on your hand and they end up like that, they've become fatter, they actually move on the thumb. And so here we've got some really good pollen, it's perfectly fresh, it was completely intact 30 seconds ago and now it's ready. Okay, so this is exactly what we want to be seeing here. We want to be seeing anthers arriving on my hand perfectly intact and the heat from my hand being enough to split them, to excite them and split the anther open and then leaving pollen on the hand as I pick them up. This means the pollen is perfectly at the right stage. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pollen, put it onto this, um, this stigma, shake it. This is the perfect stage for a stigma. It's uh, opened itself right up. It's showing itself to be very feathery um, and no sticking together of the filaments, uh, perfectly fluffy. And so all I do then is I pick the anther up and I just gently tap it onto the stigma, onto the florets. And I pick each one up in turn, tapping, knowing that pollen is dropping down into the floret to fertilize these florets. It's gonna be <clears throat> So it's just tap, tap, tap. Not, not ramming the anther down into it. I just want to be tapping pollen onto the, onto the tops of these florets so that it drops down. And you'll, see the, you'll see the pollen flying around at this stage. And that's an ear. Pollinated.
Okay, moving on to an ear that was emas uh, emasculated originally and then pollinated about three days ago, four days ago. Um, I just wanted to show you the difference between what to spot three or four days after pollination. You can see inside these florets the grain is starting to develop and that develops after the floret starts to close itself up having had its pollen that it requires. Here we have some compartments that were didn't get fertilized with the pollen and they're remaining gaping open still searching for pollen. So that's the first sign after about three days spot that the floret is starting to close itself up and tighten and then after three or four days you can start to clearly see a grain beginning to form inside and then eventually we end up with an ear uh, hopefully with, with plenty of floret compartments uh, being filled with grain development. Okay, to show you now what happens uh, after you've pollinated an ear, first, before I do that, I will wash my forceps that have had pollen on, and also the back of my hand, which we saw also had some pollen grains. So we clean those up. And then, to just show you around this ear, which was pollinated four, five days ago, um, what I wanted to show was the way that the floret starts to close itself up if it's been pollinated successfully and fertilization has occurred. Um, that, that's the first signs that a pollination is successful if the floret starts to close in. If it doesn't, if it gapes open like this, this is a sign that the pollen hasn't taken successfully and that the, the stigma is still searching for pollen. So they're the two extremes, one gaping open, still looking for pollen, one successfully pollinated and in fact what you can see in there is a developing grain. You can see the dark green crease of the centre of the grain starting to develop and uh, this says that you've got a successful pollination. At this point make sure there are no rogue anthers that have been left behind. Um, if that's the case then uh, you may have to dispose of the ear but um, if you've got no rogue anthers then you have a successful pollination. And that's occurred by popping a bag over. Um, put the bag over as soon as you've pollinated. And that makes sure that every bit of pollen in there is exactly what you've given it. And that no other rogue pollen comes in. And then of course you fill your label in with uh, a code and the two parents that have been involved. And um, the date that the pollination occurred. And you leave for around five five weeks it will take about four weeks for the grain to fully develop and then if you really want to speed things up to dry them off in a week or two after that uh, will give you a, a grain a seed that you could use for your next generation so in your search for pollen and anthers which are at the right stage First you have to know the development stages of your ear. Um, the most mature part of an ear is around the way two thirds of the way up and it's those outside florets there. And even those are developing at a different speed because you can just see that one sits lower slightly than the other. Um, that can alternate each way, but so this, this floret is slightly more developed than that one. And so what I will do is I will spot that the anthers are extruding from certain florets and then work my way down or up in a, towards a, a less developed floret. This one, although the anthers haven't extruded, they've still spent their pollen, uh, so we need to go further down. And eventually we find one like this where the anthers are still intact and we just gently, with the, using the forceps to just gently hold the, the tips of the anthers we get them out onto the back of the hand and we leave them there to, um, to warm up a little bit. Meanwhile you carry on searching and you look for anthers that are just about to pop. Those ones were just around popping as we got them out. Um, better to get them out completely intact. 
But meanwhile, you watch these on the backs of your hands, they're starting to, to move, to kind of twitch around a bit as they start to split open. And this, again, is, is perfect pollen, really great pollen. It's a really nice white, a kind of yellowy white. Um, and they're just, and if I just touch them now, you'll see pollen starting to come off on the hand. So it's just crucial that you know exactly the order that, that anthers develop and become ready for, for pollination. So that's, okay, yeah, then we'll, yeah. So that was, that was the simple way where you work up and down the ear uh, trying to find the correct anthers. But even knowing that your third, fourth, and even fifth floret, you have to know the order that they're coming in as well. So here, lots of the outside florets have already spent their pollen. They've already gone through anthesis. So we start to look inside the third floret here. And this is, again, just at the right stage. And we can look at the third, we can look at the fourth floret. A little bit too young. There's a fourth, there's a fifth, sometimes even a sixth floret. Um, so it's all about knowing the order that the anthers develop. That one's a little bit too young, a little bit of green still on it. You really want a white yellow uh, anther. So those anthers that we pulled out there, again, just at the right stage, they're a nice white yellow. Uh, the heat from the hand is starting to excite the pollen.